As an introduction to this morning's presentation, I'd like to draw on the words of Dr. Michael Newman, who was recently inducted into the International Adult and Continuing Education Hall of Fame in recognition for his lifelong contribution to adult education in Australia and internationally. Newman makes the point that when we talk about adults as learners, we are wandering into the fields of psychology and sociology where there are lots of ideas and no pat answers. Similarly, with this presentation this morning, nothing that will be said is sacred or sacrosanct. Take it from any uh, take from it any ideas that you feel are right, add them uh, add them to your own ideas, and form your own theory of adult learning. The aim today is to build a frame of reference that works for you as a tutor of older Australian learners in the broadband for seniors program. I'd like to start by really going through a brief overview of generational learning styles because uh, that to some extent starts to set the scene I think for, um, for where we're going with the rest of the session. Julie Coates in her book about generational learning styles tells us that in 1998 for the first time in history there were four generations of adults living, working and, le and learning within the same society. On January the 1st, 1980, the first millennial generation, that's Generation Y, were born. 18 years on, in 1998, we have, we have four generations of adults raising families, going to work and engaging in learning. The multi-age classroom had arrived along with the issues of managing diverse generations in the workplace and the classroom. The changes in the nature and availability of information between the 20th and the 21st century are staggering as we all are all aware and as the population grows not only are there more people but there are also more adults in every co age cohort particularly those 60 plus. Educators and trainers for the first time are faced with teaching and training adults from four generations in a single classroom whose ages can range from the late teens and early 20s to their 70s. While the purpose of Coates' book is to provide strategies to improve both teaching and communication across these generations, it's also a useful resource to use to understand something of the background, outlook and context with which people of different generations approach learning. My purpose in using it is to try to build a picture of a generation of 60 plus that, is, that make up the Broadband for Seniors program, as well as provide a snapshot of key influences and characteristics of other generational cohorts. However, before we, can, before we look more closely at the 60 age, uh, plus age cohort and what they can bring to the learning experience, it might be useful to understand something of when these four generations were born and some of their characteristics. In broad terms, the pre-boomers were un an unlabeled generation. In American terms, this generation were born between 1920 and 33, and they were called the Veterans Generation, which includes many World War II veterans. The situation is not diff different to here in Australia. This cohort is a much larger one than the following one, born between 1933 and 1945. Coates refers to this latter cohort as, a de as the depression babies and they form a smaller cohort than the veterans. A thumbnail sketch of these two cohorts if we push them together would include the following core characteristics. They are, they are traditional uh, learners, uh, they are respectful of authority and they want respect in return. They prefer a stable learning environment and that is, that is both orderly and risk free. They tend to be conformers and appreciate logic, consistency and discipline. Getting the big picture first and then moving on to the details is a preference for acquiring knowledge by this group of learners. Some specific do's and don'ts that can, make, uh, can help make for a successful learning experience for the pre-boomers are firstly, and we'll go on to there, thank you, uh, don't make them feel on the spot in front of peers or young colleagues uh, or learners. Show respect for their background and experience. Ask permission to coach or correct. Use tact and show respect, especially if you're much younger. Uh, develop real world links and examples for information. Make clear logical presentations of fact. It's important to avoid stereotyping older learners. 
Remember, this is a generation that has valued progress. They have already seen and embraced many new scientific and medical achievements and adopted other technologies over their lifespan, such as the car, telephone and television. Finally, with these characteristics, this generation has a can-do attitude when it comes to learning with new technology. Even if, it's a, even, if it's a little, even if it is a little more challenging and they are a little slower in mastering it these days. The next generational group many of us would uh, be more familiar with is the baby boomer cohort and they were born between 1946 and 1964. Boomers are learners. This is the group that amongst other things fueled the lifelong learning movement around the world. They were the majority of participants who are uh, in enrichment and professional development programs and for the past 25 years have engaged in large numbers in both award and non-award degree courses and programs like U3A. Boomers are perceived as workaholics, competitors dedicated to success both at work and in the classroom. Early boomers, because they formed the largest cohort globally, had to compete for jobs in higher education places. I was just saying, uh, just reporting on some of the uh, boomer self-perceptions that were uh, derived from a New York Times study in 1996. Basically, they believe that they don't age. The majority believe that middle age begins at 72. 46% of them felt that uh, felt 10 to 20 years younger than their chronological age, and 12% felt older, and 10% felt that they were always a kid at heart. While this is not all bad, Coates believes it's important when teaching, managing or communicating with boomers to realise that they may perceive themselves to be anywhere from 10 to 20 years younger than their chronological age and this may lead to a mismatch between aspirations and what can be realistically achieved. Boomers have a tendency to know things intellectually and yet remain unaware that they have not tra yet translated this knowledge into skills. Although boomers grew up in a competitive world, they were, uh, were also a most pampered generation and optimistic almost beyond reason. Although that, that optimism, according to Coates, in America at least, began to break down with the assassin assassination of John Kennedy and Martin Luther King. Some general Generalised tips for teaching boomers derived from Coates, Draves and others uh, were things like being democratic, treat them as equals, respect their experience, acknowledge what they know, treat them as though they were young even though they're not, <laughs> ask lots of questions and acknowledge what they know, just because you may be in charge don't think that they accept that you're in authority, um, Dialogue and participation is a key to this group. Don't be authoritarian. Boomers have authority problems and will turn off quickly if they think you're bossing them around. Boomers are text oriented and like to read. Boomers uh, feel that they should read everything assigned and find it difficult to scan or be selective in what they read. Boomers are not oriented to multimedia and even regard multimedia as frivolous or entertainment rather than as a learning tool. Boomers feel a, uh, feel a course can solve just about any problem. They are attracted to the experience or journey of learning and like the word learning. I'll briefly sketch some of the learning characteristics of the following generation, which is Generation X now. Generation X were born between 1965 and 1980 and they followed the boomers. Many of us have children who belong to this cohort. This was the grunge generation. Coates and others say of Generation X is that they are defined by many older adults, particularly boomers, as, quote, anyone younger than themselves whom they don't understand. But the cohort uh, divide between Generation X's and the other two preceding generations is a very deep one in relation to values and expectations. This generation's reality is that their economic situation is very difficult, uh, different rather, from those of their parents, uh, as is their educational enrolment and attainments. Their relationship with their parents are different from those uh, of the boomers with their parents. Reading, a favourite recreational activity of boomers and the veterans' generation, is not much in vogue with these younger adults. Some of the events attributed to shaping the values of Gen X 
uh, the experience of being the latchkey kids left alone after school to care for themselves while both parents worked. Large numbers were raised in single parent families. Exes see the traditional work as unpredictable and unreliable because of the experience of their parents being laid off or downsized by employers irrespective of the ease of service. This is a generation often written about as having survived tremendous social stress and upheaval. Gen Xers don't want to be politically correct. That, that is a trademark of the boomers. What does this mean for the classroom? Coates from her research offers the following observations. Gen Xers want to know from the outset what's expected of them. This group bristle at rigidity and lack of choices and options. Going through unnecessary steps because this is the way it's always been done is a taboo for this group. They choose to focus on outcomes, not processes. Learning needs to be relevant. Develop that you need to develop participatory learning activities for them. Be visual. This group are visual learners. This, this group learnt to read with Kermit the Frog dancing with the letter E. Use technology. While Gen Xers are hard workers, they are not obsessed, like boomers, with being the best. They will attempt to meet any learning requirements at, the, at a competent level. Grades are not overwhelmingly important to them either. Gen Xers are more self-confident than boomers, and role play techniques work well with them. This generation wants practical outcomes that will help them reach a goal. Remember, this generation is experiencing the brunt of change in the transition from an industrial society to an information society. And, and as with the, the other forms of social change, these challenges are often greater because the world of those affected by this type of change is one without precedent. In other words, they're moving through into an era where there is, there is no uh, precedent to, to draw, back, draw on. Finally, a few words about those born between 1980 and 2000. This is Generation Y, or the Millennial Generation. This generation is also known uh, from, from other generations that have preceded them. They're different from those, those that have preceded them. This group, according to Coates, uh, are also known as the Net Generation for obvious reasons, or as Generation Next, N Generation, or the Millennial Generation. Coates suggests that they do have a great deal in common with their grandparents and great-grandparents, following some of the parallel parallels that Coates has identified. Both generations were born at the end of one century and the beginning of another. Both generations experienced the coming of age within the period when, the con when their country, the USA in particular, was moving from one era to another. In the case of the pre-boomers, the veterans, the country was moving from an agricultural age to an industrial one. In the case of Gen Y, it's moving from the industrial to an information age. Both generations experienced radical new, a radical new world, changing technologies, the petrol engine in the early 1900s and the internet in the 2000s. Both generations are larger than the preceding one. Both generations have been the focus of doting parents concerned with providing them with every advantage. Both generations have come to age at a time when the education system has lagged behind social change. Both generations see themselves as powerful and able to, to change the world. Both generations have an optimistic outlook. Both generations have experience and believe in the power of science to conquer the unknown. And both generations set the stage for the evolution over the next hundred years. Music